Okay. Hello everyone, yeah. this is Amna Yusuf from Save Our Children Foundation. I hope you're doing well. Hi everyone, I'm Abdullah Chaudhary from Save Our Children Foundation. I hope you guys are okay. Good, Today thanks. We, thanks for having me on. Today we have two special guests with us, Mr. Nada Khani and Sairo Sheikh. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Thank you for having me over. Saira Sheikh is the Vice President of Sarah Sheikh Foundation and she has a diploma in Integrative Psychology and has also worked as a mental health therapist for five years. She also has worked at Karwane Hayat, a non-profit mental health facility for the underprivileged. In addition to that, she also has been closely associated with the AAS Foundation and is also politically affiliated with PTI and she has done a lot of social work on their behalf. Um, Huned Lakhani is the chairman of the Ikra University and the vice president of the Harvard University Alumni Association of Pakistan. He is quite involved in social work and is associated with many different foundations such as Sweet Home Foundation, Ikra Sweet Home Trust and Pakistan Bethel Mall. Huned is also involved in the real estate sector and has quite a few residential and commercial properties all over Pakistan. He has also just recently been associated with the all right, Saira and Hanad, the reason oh, so, we are conducting so, so, these live so sessions. So we both so we both yeah. <laughs> yeah. Achha, so the reason we are conducting these live sessions is obviously to raise awareness about the underprivileged children of our society. So in this regard, we will be asking you a couple of questions and have engaging our audience also with uh, us, and we'll. It's obviously an attempt to help raise, uh, SOCF spread awareness about the underprivileged of our society. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, Saira and Hanad, uh, it is very common how the number of children found living and working and also begging in Pakistan ha has been continuously growing despite efforts to provide them the basic <clears throat> education and aid. Abhi, we, we saw these figures where an estimated 1.5 million children live on street without access to proper education, health care and housing facilities. So what do you think is the government's role in providing for these children? Do you think that the government recognizes their responsibility towards these children? Uh, should I go first? Sure. Please. Um, actually, um, getting on to that, I think uh, that no no growing effort by the government has been made to provide aid or education, none whatsoever. Because if you see the uh, state of schools, I've been involved in education since 2013. Schools are dilapidated, they're not trained teachers, there are no toilet facilities, and even if there are, they're unusable. And I mean, then you talk about both schools in sin. So I mean, I think in terms of the government providing any aid or doing anything for education, I think it's uh, it's a nil. And uh, the second part of the question that you know, uh, I think the government poverty circumstances it's completely redefined uh, the term children or the dictionary meaning of street children. Because you know, we thought street children are you know kind of children who are homely. But not anymore. Street children are children that wander on the street, that beg on the street, and they have used to go back to their families. A lot of them are kind of put there by mafias. And uh, the, uh, poverty is a disease, but I mean, there's no other resource either. So, I mean, I think, you know, by and large, it's a very grim picture. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, taking the issue of domestic violence on children, only recently an eight-year-old girl in Rawalpindi was murdered for freeing some parrots. The government still hasn't acted against the culprit. So, why do you guys think the government doesn't implement the existing laws on child labor? Can I add uh, a little bit uh, for your first question? Uh, the yeah. yeah. Okay, I first... Um, I would like to say it is the first and the foremost responsibility of the government to take care of the poor. And uh, the poorest of the poor are these orphan and uh, kids uh, without uh, any uh, kids on the street who don't have the strength to fight with the society, who don't have the strength to get uh, what is their right. Now, um, now, the situation is different in every province. 
So if you look at the uh, NWFP and Punjab, they have progressed in this uh, in this uh, uh, street children uh, scene, especially. Uh, whereas uh, the um so uh sorry mr Hanad, i think we uh, we're losing you on we're experiencing some wi-fi issues from your end That's a bit unfortunate. One second. Okay, he left the studio. All right, um, Abdullah, uh, the question you had, let's just ask that to Sarah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, taking the issue on domestic violence, very recently in Rawalpindi, an eight year old girl was murdered um, just for freeing some parrots. And the government still hasn't done anything against the culprits or the suspects. So why do you think the government doesn't really implement the existing laws on child labor? Uh, who needs there? Would you want him to kind of uh, yeah. try? Sorry, Nath, we lost you there. Can you you I just uh, got connected again. So can you uh, repeat the question? Please? Repeat the question. Yeah. So yeah. Um, taking the issue of domestic violence, uh, only recently an eight-year-old girl was murdered in Rahul Pindi just for freeing some parrots. And uh, the government hasn't really done anything against the culprits or the suspects. So why do you think the government doesn't implement the existing laws on child labor? Okay. Uh, see, um... <laughs> I, I don't know about this particular case, but overall, uh, if you look at the picture of child labor, the country has progressed a lot. Uh, uh, since the um, 1980s, when uh, there were uh, so many uh, bans and so many uh, uh, problems with child labor in so many industries, now the situation is much better. Uh, it is... Uh, uh, it is uh, not. Um, um, Sarah, would you like to uh, comment on this? Because I don't know about. Yeah. Uh, so I no sure. Uh, Abdullah, on your question, I mean, frankly speaking, I don't see uh, the government is not seeing the seriousness of the consequences, because you know yeah. I think that the children in Pakistan engage in the most in the worst forms of child labor. There's forced domestic work, there's bonded labor in uh, brick kiln and in agriculture. And our, you know, following the devolution of power uh, to the provinces and the government, the provinces are now responsible for enforcing the labor laws. So the government must show political will to eradicate child labor. Okay, recently, Shirin Mazari has uh, approved this bill, which is like it says, employing children as domestic labor, uh, the bill against it. Uh, and it's uh, for Islamabad only. But now the thing is that we're waiting, we're waiting to see if when the next case happens, and God forbid if it happens, what is going to be the implementation? What are going to be the punishments? Are they going to be carried on or are they just going to linger on in court? So, uh, you know, yeah, wrap it up like that. Yeah. Uh, just one more question. How do you think uh, civil society is playing its role in helping against child abuse? Do you think the mindset of people is changing over time or is it just the same when it comes to child labor? Is that me or uh, both? we can both respond? Yeah. Whoever feels more comfortable. Would you like to go first? Well, I would. I would like to share my experience with the uh, yeah. with the Sindh government recently. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, as soon as uh, PTI came into power, we tried to do something for the street children of Karachi. We went to the police. We went to uh, the chief secretary to find out uh, a location to keep all the uh, children. Uh, 
uh, yeah. to pick them up from the streets and take them to this uh, uh, SAS house, which we have in Kurangi, with the capacity of yeah. about 1,000 children. So we went to the police, we went to the Sindh government, we went to the chief secretary, we tried to convert that into a child protection unit. And um, uh, initially, uh, it was a lot of support. But then when um, we needed the approvals and we needed the administration to uh, pick up the kids and uh, give it to us to keep in the uh, in the uh, uh, sweet home SAS house in uh, Hub, uh, it just um, it was it wasn't done. It, nothing happened, and um, mm-hmm. and uh, I felt as if uh, uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, politics involved, but actually more than the politics, it's mafias. There's a mm-hmm. mafia for uh, street kids, which has mm-hmm. uh, uh, its own ways and means to uh, involve the court and get them out of those uh, places and then put them back on, on the streets. So, yeah. um, and the police also makes a lot of money from these uh, beggars. So it's uh, difficult to move the police to uh, arrest them and bring them uh, to these houses. Yeah. And nothing uh, happened so far. It's been two years now. So we haven't been mm-hmm. able to do anything about it. Yeah, because I think Mr. Alana was also involved in it from what I know. And I think uh, Mr. Alana was speaking very well of you because he said, you know, Haneed was helping me a lot. But boy, wow, all these things kind of, you know, I think he made a whole proposal which is still lying on some desk somewhere. And, uh, and and nothing really happened. Like you said, you know, aage machinery chalti hai aur fir wo pass jati hai. So, yeah. I mean, you know, so what is behind that is a good question. I could be more vocal about it, but I don't think this is the platform. But, um, Abdullah, I'd like to yeah. kind of answer the question uh, that you said that what role is the civil society playing? Uh, you know, civil society is playing a role, an important role on Facebook and media. But unfortunately, many people don't come out. Ab ye jo Zora ka case hua tha, it happened, uh, and I mean, five days before she died, um, there was uh, the George Floyd uh, murder in America. And yeah. millions of people came out. And it became the Black Lives Matter movement. And I mean, it went, it was global. Even in Pakistan, people have black, you know, as their yeah. kind of cities. But the thing is, I mean, Zora died. She kind of, you know, let a few birds go. She died. Did people come out? No. I mean, some, you know, kind of conscientious civil society members held a protest. But what was the attendance? 12 people. So the thing yeah. is, I mean, civil society, maybe a small sector is playing a role. But by and large, it's almost like the traffic light, you know. You see all this misery on the red sign and, you know, you feel bad for those two seconds. The green signal comes on and you move on and you move on with your life. But some of us, I'm so glad, stay with it. And that's what makes us, you know, take action yeah. work towards it or you know, get invested in it. Because frankly speaking, it haunts me. I mean, you know, you would think you get pleasure out of this kind of work. It haunts me. You know, the, the, the situation... Thing. So, yeah. All right, Sarah, this is uh, my question again to you. So, if you see the number of street, uh, school age children in Pakistan, it is approximately 50 million, out of yeah. which around 37% are unable to attend school. So, what yeah. step do you think the government should be taking in this regard to help these children? Well, first of all, you know, recognize it as a education emergency. I mean, this generation and the next generation is going to spend its time on the streets, turning to drugs, petty crime, and then more serious crimes. If you look at China, in 1949, the literacy rate was 15%. 1982, 82%. Currently, 96%. And what were they, what, were, what was it that they did? Active policies, anti-illiteracy campaign, encouraging night schools, and language simplification. So, I mean, my message to the government is that wake up, wake up before your kids, you know, you start inhabiting the graveyard, the brothels and the prisons over here. I mean, it's a wake up call. 
So, I mean, that's you know, how I feel about it. All right. So, um, Mr. Hanad, you yourself are an educationist. What would you say have been your hindrances and what more do you think the government should do to play its part? Well, I agree with Sarah. It's a, it's a high time that the government uh, should wake up. I see the uh, lack of will in every um, uh, political party to deal with the, uh, the serious issue of education. Education is a constitutional right of every children. And if we, as Pakistan, if we have to move forward in this uh, uh, race of uh, uh, this global village, um, and race between the nations. We have to do better than other nations. We have to educate our youth better than the other countries. We have to give them uh, skills that are better than other countries. Our labor productivity has to be better than other countries to move faster than other countries. And uh, actually, uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, you know, fact of the matter is that uh, economy... Uh, uh, it's important for an economy to have better skilled people uh, to uh, perform better than other economies. And if you want to do that, we'll have to train up kids. We haven't even started that. You know, our school systems, if you say that 37% of our kids are going to schools, what do they learn in those schools? I mean, they can hardly write a line, yeah. a sentence, uh, after completing five years of education, after primary. So uh, what do you expect from these children after 20 years of, uh, or 12 years of education? I mean, they'll be uh, leading your uh, industries, your factories, your other things. I mean, they're only training, what, uh, watchmen and guards and drivers and that's it? So yeah. we will be a nation of watchmen, guards and drivers only. If you, want to, uh, make, uh, yeah, if you want to make, yeah, if you want to make uh, um, uh, products uh, that can uh, sell for higher margin, you need to develop your uh, skill labor to make those things. More engineers, more uh, technicians, uh, more businessmen to create yeah. more jobs in the country. Uh, we, we unfortunately, we are not doing it. We are only involved in uh, uh, politics and um, wars and. Uh, all the uh, things that are not going to, you know, unproductive things that are not going to take this nation to any um, better place. True. I, I agree with Huned on that completely. All right, Mr. Hunaid Lahani, um, considering as a whole, we're drastically like very short of shelters and orphanages for the children. So, um, and I think you have done a lot of work, social work in this field, and you have your own orphanage. Can you tell us about your work in this field? Vicky, um, there are approximately 60,000 orphans uh, in, in this country right now. And um, I'm sure uh, it will have a 50-50 ratio of boys and girls, uh, according to the population of our country. But uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the government has been able, able to adopt only 3,000 out of these 60,000. And um, uh, whatever I have done is just uh, less than a drop uh, in the ocean. I have uh, adopted about 100 kids, approximately 100 kids. Um, to be exact, about 85 as of now. But uh, uh, this is nothing compared to what we should have done or what we need to do. Um, we have to take care of these kids and especially the girls. Uh, most of the girls are who are orphans, they used as a, um, they're either sold uh, or used as a domestic uh, servant in their relatives' houses. So um, yeah. there's nothing uh, done in that front. And then we have uh, quite a uh, a huge number of uh, handicapped people. So that is also very important uh, that we must do something about that. Right. Um, Saira, since you are the vice president of the Save Our Children's Foundation, could you tell us about the work which SOCF is doing in this field for shelters for kids and what further steps should the government take for the protection of these shelterless kids? 
could you just uh, repeat that? All right. Um, could you tell us about the work which Save Our Children Foundation is doing in this field for shelters for kids, and yeah, what yeah. further steps should the government take for the protection of these shelterless kids? Uh, okay. No, I'm just kind of. Uh, we've actually been involved with, uh, you know, kind of shelters and all of this right from the beginning. We've also, I mean, as Bonet had mentioned, I mean, um, we've met representatives from federal government, we've met reps from Sindh government, and yet from the very beginning, we are emphasizing the need of a shelter uh, for these children. But I mean, you know, Hamari to Khabat Kahim bini Ponch, I mean, you know, it's just meeting and then it was forgotten about and basically any proposal was just, you know, they engaged temporarily, not even engaged temporarily, but you know, it was just a complete uh, we didn't get much of a response. And uh, but one thing about shelters is like as Huned is also mentioning, you know, temporary sh shelters are not the solution. I mean, एक आपने छोटा सा makeshift room बना दिया किसी safe house में किसी थाने में that is not your solution. These children are traumatized children. They often are abused. They come from very very disturbed backgrounds. A lot of them are addicts. And the thing is, they're not the culprits. They're the victims of the system. So I mean, what you need to look at is a wholesome picture. You need to have a place. Where you know you've got uh, pediatricians and you've got a psychologist on board, you've got pleasant surroundings, and it's a wholesome picture where you know it's a house where you can nurture these children, and not just a room. Alana Saab again, like I would mention, I mean, has been working towards something like this. You know, ke jahan we have been ho, or ye baki amenities bhi ho. Let's just say I had the chance of visiting the Child Protection Bureau in uh, Lahore. And I was very pleasantly surprised. There were acres of fields for children to play on. Uh, they had a separate, you know, unit for uh, well, a full building for girls, a separate building for boys. They have education. They kind of so it was like a home. And the other thing was a lot of unwanted children, whether they are runaways or street children. You know, children who don't, or their families don't want to keep them. It was a kind of a home for them and a very, you know, kind of productive, happy home. And the thing is that at least they were receiving education. There was a system there. Till, you know, further action. So the idea is you engage them. Or, uh, so, you know, it was, it was pleasant and that's what we need. I mean, if this Kurangi shelter is complete, I mean, look at what all it will uh, address. And we are not saying that we are going to put the government money. As private people, we want to help you. But there's just, you know, they don't, nobody wants any help. We don't hear this concept in the world. And but I mean, you can see that the whole child protection bureau is going to be going to be going to be going to be going to be. But look at the amenities they have. You know, yeah. so, so I mean, it's, it's sad. It's yeah. sad. All right, Mr. Hunad, uh, what role and responsibilities do you think the college and university students of Pakistan have for out of school children, and how can one create awareness about that? Well, I think uh, uh, it is important for a university to uh, have some uh, impact in its surroundings. And uh, if you see uh, uh, all over the world, it's like this. Universities uh, uh, bring a lot of uh, economic uh, uh, opportunity for the neighbors, uh, for the people of that area. And uh, also for Pakistan, it is important for our kids to... Uh, to uh, see the ground realities, to work in the field, to work uh, in the uh, uh, in the neighborhood, and uh, uh, see the ground realities. It is uh, very important for uh, one's personality, one's success, to uh, uh, learn to uh, give back also, or taste the feeling of giving back. Uh, that is why we uh, in in my universities are compulsory to uh, work for any social project uh, 
it is uh, it is uh, uh, a three credit hour course, I think. But um, they have to uh, do any kind of project. Uh, uh, it social may be uh, a social work or maybe a CSR work, so that they can go and continue this work in their companies also. There have been that- more than 600 interventions of many different kinds. It can be, you know, microfinance or uh, doing some uh, work in the street or helping the street kids or delivering uh, food to some shelters or doing something for some social work organization or giving us to any social work organization. Yeah, and actually um, we've been working so yeah. with some of the kids from your uh, university. I mean, Gibran is a prime example of the fantastic work that he's been doing. And he's a product of uh, Ikra University. And uh, so that is something that, you know, is very, very positive. You know, Aman Foundation started a program called Teach for Pakistan. And uh, that was an excellent program because, you know, kids who had the privilege to go to foreign universities or, you know, private education, they came and gave time and taught underprivileged children. So, you know, you kind of that cult, that divide was crossed and uh, they engaged and saw the ground realities. And uh, my own son was involved in it for six months or more. And I mean, you know, it was something that kind of, um, you know, impacted him maybe shortly, I, I would say. But the thing is, you know, is kissing key engagement. So more initiatives like this, like Runeed has taken, you know, Teach for Pakistan was also such an initiative where you kind of had educated privileged children giving time to the society and they you you know need to kind of do that for you know to, to kind of evolve into some kind of a human i mean aapko in schoolon se kya padte hain do they even teach you what humanity is west mein you know islam or humanity ye cheeze practice hoti hain ya is pe aapko lectures milte hain so pakistan is one place that you know we do not uh, kind of हमें तो पता भी नहीं कि ह्यूमैनिटी चीज क्या है आई मीन फिलेंथ्रोपी बहुत है सब कुछ है बट आई मीन बाय एंड लार्ज इट्स अ बिग गैप सायरा आई जस्ट वांटेड टू आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट समथिंग यू प्रीवियसली सेड बिकॉज़ um दिस इज समथिंग दैट आई हैव सीन पर्सनली एज़ वेल इन माय स्कूल एंड आल्सो इन लाइक अदर एरियाज um basically you said that when when the george floyd incident happened in the states um mm-hmm. like you know people came out and everybody was you know out and they were like on the streets marching they were protesting yeah. even even a lot of people from pakistan as well as all yeah, our yeah. stories on instagram yeah. a lot of posts yeah. but when when something very similar or sometimes even worse happens in pakistan to a pakistani or a resident of this country um mm-hmm. i don't see the same response even from people in my school and even from yeah. like people my age and also like many other people like yeah. uh, could you care to explain like why that could be the case i think people are just uh, i mean mera interesting they are disinterested i mean beirut ka bhi hua hai facebook bhara hua hai beirut se i mean aapke neighborhood mein aisi aisi cheeze ho jati hain but there is no mention of it so i don't know maybe ye abhi tak british raj ya pata nahi abhi tak wohi influence chal raha hai क्योंकि बाहर वो चीजें होती हैं तो रिएक्शन आप देखें हमारी यहाँ सिविल सोसाइटी इट हैज नो रिएक्शन वी आर डेड यू नो वी आर लाइक आई थिंक वी थिंक सो मच दैट वी रिएक्ट टू नथिंग आई मीन दूर हमारा एज वॉज एन इंसिडेंट वेयर आई मीन आई हैव लॉट ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट फॉर नाइन साइट्स ऑन दैम एंड कसूर हमारा है यू नो देयर आई मीन कहते हैं ना जैसे uh they it was a kind of a victory i think for all social activists that unki kavishe thi that the zainab alert bill got passed i mean but ek saal wo lage rahe hain and they pursued it and finally it, uh, you know it was passed but i wo jo ek case tha wo to i mean sare wrong pe hil gaye the sab you know but ye ek cheez hai it's sadly missing and sometimes i also wonder ke i mean black lives matter yes huge i totally empathize with that but i mean this ye jo zora ka case hua hai i mean do yeah, they like not matter khatam 
I don't know. Maybe our maybe a brown lives don't matter. I don't know. <laughs> हम खुद नहीं अपने आप को लिफ्ट देते तो दूसरों ने क्या देना दूसरों ने क्या देना ट्रू 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 नो आई फील लाइक दे आंसर्ड क्वेश्चंस आई आई I mean, हम तो लोगों को So, I mean, इसी तरह जैसे एक यू नो लिली ब्रिज वॉज एन एरिया दैट वॉज आइडेंटिफाइड आई मीन आई आई काइंड ऑफ केम अक्रॉस इट डूइंग समथिंग एल्स आई डू अर आई ड्राइव आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू रियली आई डोट इमेजिन आई एंड आप वर्किंग चिल्ड्रन बट दिस इज हाउ वी केम अक्रॉस दैट बस्ती एंड वी सेट के यू नो चलो कुछ ना करने से बेहतर है लेट्स ट्राई और हमने एक टाट स्कूल वहां लगाया टाट स्कूल के बाद वी वर लकी वी गॉट अ डीएमसी स्कूल वी कंप्लीटली रिफर्बिश्ड इट वहां वोकेशनल है एक्सेलरेटेड लर्निंग है हम हुनेद की इकरा इन फैक्ट ही वाज ग्रेट टू हैव टू इनवाइट अस ऑन 14th अगस्त हमने इकरा यूनिवर्सिटी पे यू नो वी सेलिब्रेटेड 14th अगस्त टुगेदर एंड यू नो व्हाट वी डिड फॉर दीस चिल्ड्रन एक वो जो होती है ना चीज इज इट एनफ और व्हाट यू कॉल सेल्फ वर्थ टू गिव दीस चिल्ड्रन दैट no child dreams of being a street child you know no child they, his dreams are not of being a street child they dream what other children dream you know what you dream of what my children dream of they have that but jab ye aaye the ye bilkul jungli animals the but you know you work you give them love you win their trust and you make them recognize their self worth and you see these children now they wait for I mean, they've been to so many places. Yes, like museum, guy, and we are proud of the way they engage sure. with society. Who? Who? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Hello, Abhijit. I think we had some Wi-Fi issues yeah. there. I I think I can't hear Sara. Yeah. G. Um, I think we've right. lost them both. Yeah, we yeah. lost. Uh, we lost the last. Maybe the times. Are... You could repeat that a little bit. Hello. Can you like? Guys so you us? you were talking about their visit to this museum, Sara. school for uh, street children oh. it's a dmc 59 the school and i mean aap you know you're talking about 100 people humne to 30 uh oh uh oh sorry 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 Uh, Acha, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, great. Uh, it's amazing uh, that uh, I know your group. I know Shyan and uh, everybody. They are involved in so many good activities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, although um, I agree that uh, it's it's not enough uh, uh, done by the civil civil society, but still there are a lot of people. and um, we need to keep the optimism here because i personally know so many people doing so much work for orphans for street kids for education for animal rights for you name it for um, uh, handicapped people for and uh, the 
I mean, there's so many businessmen who are involved in philanthropy. Oh, yes. So many big I mean, social work organizations. So a lot of work is going on and we are, yeah. see, we are achieving good. Uh, uh, if you look at the TCF school system, they have yeah. done wonders. Uh, yeah, if you look at the uh, Silani Welfare Trust, they are doing an amazing job in so many different areas. They have uh, they worked in 64 different private, sectors. private enterprises. Yeah, yeah, they're they all private. Uh, all private. Akhuat is amazing. Bilkul. Yeah. Bilkul. So, uh, it's not a civil society is not doing enough. There are so many good organizations. And I think uh, it's important that we join hands together yeah. or if we want to do something we join any such organization give some time to yeah. them or give some yeah. uh, help them in any way we can uh, maybe help them uh, in in uh, teaching a few kids uh, for a, you know a certain number of hours a week or a month so we all have, yeah. all have to do something for our nation and the more i mean our, uh, our, our we encourage open but ye jo hai na needs children jo hai ये मुझे लगता है कि ऑलमोस्ट यू नो इन इस सेक्टर को तो पीपल डोंट वांट टू रिकॉग्नाइज उनको लगता है कि पता नहीं ये तो गंद है सोसाइटी का ये जो होते हैं ना भीख मांगने वाले बच्चे दैट्स अ डार्क डार्क होल एंड वहां जाके ना थिंग्स स्टॉप आई एग्री विद यू दिस इज दिस इज अ ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ किड्स हु आर mistreated on daily basis and uh, they are going to give this back to the society at some point and as of now we are not doing anything but um, sooner or later we'll have to recognize it and do something about it also and we will inshallah dekhi uh, in most of the countries when uh, when the economy is in, in such a situation to uh, aise issues aur zyada badhte hain अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट भी बढ़ती है एंड पॉवर्टी भी बढ़ती है एंड दीज इशूज कम अप बट एज सुन एज द कंट्री इज ग्रोइंग इकोनॉमिकली दीज थिंग्स आर टेकन केयर ऑफ बाय द ग्रोथ रेट ओनली तो इनशाला लेट्स कीप अर फिंगर्स क्रॉस होप फॉर द बेस्ट एंड आई आई सी लाइट एट द एंड ऑफ द टनल है बिकॉज ऑफ सो मच गुड हैपनिंग इन दिस कंट्री i see a good economic growth very soon and i see all of all these ills of the society uh, will be uh, taken care of inshallah soon inshallah inshallah you know kind of enrollment out of, out of school children i mean wo ek cheez hai ki jab tak aap inko you know accelerated learning se padhayenge nahi aap to inko vocational bhi nahi sikha sakte so you know wo ek aur cheez hai ki i mean we have to work to, uh, to uh, together to work education or i mean or wo har bachche ka haq hai you know i mean aur yahan to it's almost as if ke hum matlab kashkol mang rahe hain apni government se i mean the state it states it's the duty of the state to kind of you know educate these children to at least agar hum ye kaam kar rahe hain hame ye log help to kare अगर हम वसाइल अपने इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं बट यहाँ तो मतलब ये है ना कि बिल्कुल ही आई मीन एजुकेशन की तरफ से तो यही है कि आई मीन यस टी वगैरह बड़ा अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं बट अदर देन दैट इट्स अ मिजरेबल पिक्चर इट्स मिजरेबल या इट्स ट्रू करप्शन के ऊपर हमारे काफी ज्यादा so resources and was ayo jate and especially in in our province in sin uh, we lose about 200 billion rupees every year in education and 200 billion rupees in healthcare sector if that money is also spent rightly then uh, a, a lot of these issues at least we can put 100% of care of our kids in yeah. in uh, good private schools yeah. if we use that money properly accountability <laughs> yeah um uh, all right guys with that i think we will conclude the session thank you so much mr nath miss saira for your time this yeah, was a really productive for today session. and thank you everyone for watching stay tuned uh, i think almost every week we have these sessions now
so i hope you guys enjoy them we discussed different issues so uh, thank you very much allah take care of yourself thanks for inviting me thank you allah